royal family welcome to my channel i am the pick a card empress and today we're asking what has your person realized about you and this connection so we have four piles today pile number one is this flower and the tarot avatar Pile number two is this flower and the Mud and Love Tarot. Pile number three is this flower and the Bone, Stone and Earth, Flesh Tarot. And pile number four is this flower and the journey of the sacred bee and we should have a bee deck because there's so much flowers here right <laughs> all right guys so do your thing pick your part and i'm going to be back shortly with your reading royal family if you chose power one this is your reading all right so they, today we are asking and i keep forgetting to take on my little easel sorry about that Today we are asking, what have they realized about you and this connection? So I'm going to go into a different deck today for the Significator. This is the Healing Cards, this Conspiracy deck um, by one of my favorite authors, Chox Pisano. My sweater matches my cloth. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anywho. So let's have a look. We have Edipal. Okay. All right. So what I'm getting here. Um, getting somebody with mommy issues. <laughs> and it could be you and your person, quite frankly, because this is the underlying energy. All right. Um, we, we, we tap into somebody. Let me just turn down this music a tad. With mommy issues, a coddling mother. Um, there's also abandonment issues by the father, whether emotional or physical abandonment. So there's abandonment issues. There is um, a weird relationship going on with their mother. Maybe even a mother who kept them away from their father. So there's a, those kinds of complexities you know being attached to the mother figure and, and yet resenting the mother figure so a lot of weird family dynamics um at play here all right let's see the energy towards you right now and they may they may also play out that mommy issue with you Divine feminine, whether you're male or female in body, right? The person that's watching this, they may also play out that dynamic with you where they're very attached to you, but at the same time, they resent you, okay, because of the attachment. They don't want to feel that connected to someone because when you feel that connected to someone, that person has the power to hurt you and that person ha also has the power to leave your ass behind and they don't want to go through that again. So, um... There are a lot of issues that are coming up for clearing for your person right now concerning their parents, whether their parents are alive or past. There's a lot of issues that they have to unpack in order to have a healthy relationship with you. And that's that's something that they've just realized as well. Right. They have a lot of shit to unpack. I think this person um, in your relationship enjoyed um, projecting everything onto you. It was your fault. OK, it was your fault. Um they're great <laughs> they're great <laughs> but now they're realizing they're not so great they're, they're human just like everybody else and they have their own shit that they need to deal with so the energy towards you is i told you the victim i didn't look at the card i was just talking because i was getting those downloads but then um i have the card in my hand the victim okay so they feel um like the one that has been hard done by although i i don't know I feel like this is past energy and this is, this is the message that I'm getting right now. I feel that this person was so caught up 
um, in their victimhood and their and victim mode and blaming you and feminine energies for their pain that they didn't realize that they were doing you the same thing. They didn't realize that they were stabbing you in the back. It is now that they're coming into this emperor energy, which is a four here. And they're only coming into this emperor energy because they have been doing some healing. It's only because they're coming into this healing, this emperor energy, that they realize that even though they might have been a victim in the past, they also um, victimized others. I'm really getting that. They're realizing that they stabbed you in the back. They stabbed you in the back. Um, and, you know, it's their fear of abandonment, you know. They were so caught up with not getting too attached to you and pushing you away because they didn't want you to leave or they didn't want you to abandon them like their father did. Like their father did. They, they, they betrayed you anyway. They betrayed themselves too. Let's pull some cards on that victim card. But that's the message I'm getting. Okay, we have the Justice card here. Yeah, all unfair games will play over. So they just kept repeating the same cycles, right? Abandoning themselves because they didn't want to be abandoned and then playing the victim but really victimizing others. It just keep, it was a cycle that they just kept replaying. But now it looks like they've got some, um, a dose of karma there that is really um, knocked them right back into reality. So we have the Justice. Um, and this is a cycle um, that may have started last year, this healing cycle. Yeah, it looks like they, they broke their own heart. This is what I'm getting. They broke their own heart because they're now realizing you are the one. You're beautiful. You're psychic. You're sensitive. You are full of love and you are only trying to offer them love. This person treated you like if you were the enemy. What's that song? <laughs> What's that song? Like if you were the enemy. Gosh. I'm hearing her voice singing the song. I can't. I can't bring the rest of the words. If you, if, if you remember that song. It's not Jennifer Hudson. Guys, I'm sorry. It'll come back to me. All right, let's see what else they realized. So what have they realized, guys? In a nutshell, that they fucked themselves over. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's just the thing, right? There will always be that karmic justice. The universe will always bring things back into balance. Whatever you send out there is the energy that is coming right back at you. As my father would say, at 100 miles an hour, it's coming right back at you. So let's see what they real what else they realize. Underneath the deck. The five of ones in reverse. They they ain't want no more drama. Okay. They don't want no more drama. They don't want more fight with you. They want to squash any kind of beef with you. They want to make peace. They want to make peace. I also get that. You know, this person may have um attracted a lot of toxic people into their life because. People that don't want to heal, people that want to remain a perpetual victim will attract those who will victimize them in order to stay um, in that safe zone and not take accountability for their life. And I think this is what your person was doing, just attracting people with drama. And we had a five of wands below, now we have the five of swords. Yeah, they like the conflict because as long as conflict is raging, they don't have to heal. They don't have to look at themselves. They can blame something outside of themselves for their circumstance. All right, what have they realized about this connection? Let's get six cards. And you've chosen the beautiful Tara Avatar. Um, we have Page of Wands in reverse. So you may not be talking to this person right now. They did you dirty, man. They did you dirty. They were toxic. Ace of Cups in reverse. Page of Wands in reverse. Somebody really immature. 
queen of swords. <laughs> but that truth coming right at them. Libra energy. Um, king of pentacles in reverse. Taurus energy. Queen of wands. That's you. Aries energy. <clears throat> and the four of wands. Load. Well, look at that. Try now. Okay, what have they realized? That you are their twin or their soulmate. Okay, you are their twin or soulmate. You are their complement. You are their complementary opposite. Yin and yang. Okay, good and evil, dark shadow. They have all of that going on. And they really cast themselves as a villain in this whole thing. Because if you didn't realize here, he has horns, she has wings, right? So they've cast you as this angel. And they are the devil. But somehow, <laughs> some way, you all bring each other into balance. And they want you all for themselves. It also reminds me of the story of Hades and Persephone. Where he came, where Hades came and... Stole, stole Persephone, the maiden, and carried her down to the underworld. That's what they want to do. They want to carry her into their world. And they hope that you will, <laughs> will be their salvation. <laughs> what are these phrases that are coming through today? But it also reminds me of, um, there used to be this reader on youtube i think um her name was nubian divine and she had written a book called um god and the devil are twin flames never read the book okay i never read the book i'm just talking about the title because this is what this whole pick reminds me of because it's a four of wands which is a twin flame god and then we have the devil and we have this angel this angelic being right so it's like the two halves of the same coin kind of way all coming from from light even the dark comes from light if we really buy into the the story of of lucifer and the fall right so this person's also realizing yes you know they have a lot of shadow but um they too are from the light and they want to follow your lead here so what does the person realize that that you are their twin you are their soulmate and somehow some way even though they think they're you know just dastardly um Tastity, whatever. Um, and they've done horrible things. And you are this angel. Some, somehow you guys balance each other out. They see you as very sexy, very beautiful, very vibrant, very much alive, very spiritual and explosive. This person has a lot of sexual fantasies. Uh, about you they just want to watch you explode they want all that energy all that power just concentrated upon them especially at the moment of climax they want to be the one to be able to take you there they don't want anybody else to do this and even when you are pissed off with them they still want all that energy because even that turns them on everything about you turns this person on and they want you to be bound to them. They want you, they want to be in control of you. They want you to be their slave because I'm really focusing there, drawing my attention to the color that she is wearing. Right? But this woman will not be bound. She's a keg of dynamite. Okay? And they know that too. They may try and try to control you, but you are a keg of dynamite and they love every bit of it they love every bit of it they think you're a creator they think that you can manifest anything that you want you take this magic paintbrush and whatever reality you decide to paint and manifest they see you as deeply spiritual deeply psychic a little scary but they're up for the challenge they're up for the challenge they see your light side with this pink fire coming out of the volcano but they also know 
if they piss you off, if they step too far, you will check their ass so quick with this queen of swords energy. So quick. And even here, this woman is like tied to the chair. This person, they have some sick fantasies about you. If this person could tie you up and leave you at home so that nobody can see you, they would do that because they don't want to lose you. They don't want anybody else to see you. They think that anybody that sees you would want you, which could be true. They see you as a good communicator. For some of you, a good author. I see the feather in her hand. And I think you're lucky. They think you're lucky and they think that they are lucky that you are in their life. There's a lot of green in this card. They're very envious and there's a, like a, a green lightning bolt. They're very envious of anything or anyone that gets to spend time in your company. Yeah, this person kind of psycho. They think they're psycho too, you know. They really do. A lot of like very possessive energy in this card. But it comes from a place um, of insecurity. And they know that now too. So they're trying to work on that as well. Okay. With this Ace of Cups in reverse. This person's very attached to you. But they have to work on their own um, self-love. You know, they had a childhood that was really, really crappy, guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They had a very crappy childhood. And a father... That was very inconsistent. Okay? Or whoever, whoever modeled the masculine energy was very inconsistent with their love and fit affection and the home was not stable. Page of Wands for me is a, a, a child whose creativity and imagination was just crushed and crushed by, you know, the harsh realities of life. You know, things that ch children should be shielded from. There was nobody there to protect your person. And they might have had to, you know, grow up just too soon. And that's what I'm getting um, with this here. So a lot of realizations about um, their childhood, how it's affecting um, the kind of partners they attract, how it's affecting how they operate um, in relationships, um, a lot of things about you, okay, and their connection to you. Um, who you are as a person, you're a straight shooter, you're direct, a good communicator. They see you as incredibly talented, multi-talented. They see you as deeply spiritual, fiery, sexy, and they love, they're drawn in, absolutely drawn in by that. But they also realize that just like their father, or whoever, whoever modeled the masculine energy, they were inconsistent and they were not there for you. They didn't show up for you and this connection, the way that you showed up for it. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't support you like the way that you supported them. They didn't give to you like the way that you gave to them. So they're realizing, you know what? Um, yeah, they broke their own heart, really. Their own heart. Um, what does your person want you to know? Messages from their 3D self. What does your person want you to know right now? I'm going to be using the reconciliation deck. Underneath the deck. Exactly. Giving and receiving, and this is what they want. They want an equality. They, they weren't there for you like how you were there for them. Okay, they realized that. They, they shortchanged you. And you meant you, you shortchanged yourself too, right? But they shortchanged you. So going forward, what they want to focus on is, you know, the cliched equal give and take, but equality with regard to where this connection is concerned. Okay? All right, we have money matters. And it's interesting that that's coming out right by the King of Pentacles in reverse. So they're trying to get, dig themselves out of some sort of financial hole that they are in right now. So their focus is on that. Now, this person is deathly afraid of commitment because they got trust issues. Okay, well, we saw the issues that they have with both parents. Um, I mean, and your parents are your first 
and fundamental relationship. So if they can't get that together, um, they're going to have a lot of um, issues with, inter with interfacing um, with others. So your person has commitment issues and they're also um, trying to heal as well and trying to get to the root of. Yeah, um, their love is just for you. Their attention, you got their attention. Um, and they're thinking about bringing some sort of communication to you. For some of you, it might be an actual physical letter. Others, they want to send some kind of text or WhatsApp message. Uh, might even something on might be something on Facebook. Because this card is pink and purple um, and green, um, it might be um, a 5D message even. Okay, try and test out the connectivity um, of your connection. But I'm getting like this, uh, like a real message and some message that it's going to be healing because pink is the color of healing. Um, and it's going to be about love and it's also going to be spiritual because we have the green heart here and we have the purple envelope. So this message, whatever message you're going to bring in, it's going to be deep. Um, and when you hear it, it is going to touch your heart. And look, somebody just sent me a text. It's going to touch your heart. Let me see who it is because that might be a message for you as well. Who did? Actually, it was something. It was a notification regarding that whole Will and Jada um, kind of thing. Which brings back that whole, you know, the need for equal give and take and people being on the same page in a relationship. Because every time, you know, you look at that relationship, there are a lot of imbalances there. And I do feel sometimes that in order to keep people, when we are codependent or we don't love ourselves, in order to keep people in our lives, we make so many compromises um, to our principles, morals, and ethics. And every time we look back on their relationship, there's always some sort of compromise and on both sides. But compromise that is rarely not compromise, but a self-betrayal, right? So Jada, she did not want to get married. She didn't want to get married. And yet she caved in to the advice of her mother and Will. When you look at that whole red table talk thing concerning um, her relationship with the entanglement guy, he, I don't think he was in for that whole open marriage concept, right? Because if he was, he wouldn't have been hurt and wouldn't have, wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been a thing. It wouldn't have been a thing, okay? His whole facial expression would have been different. And people say he was acting. I don't think so. He looked deeply pained, all right? And it's like he's always trying to prove himself. Always trying to, you know, show her love and yet she is not happy. So I think that's the kind of dynamics that your person kind of attracts. You know, they attract people where or relationships where they are always compromising themselves. And the person might be that, that, that they're with might be doing the same. Who knows? Right. Um, there's always that self-betrayal. Right. And. Self-betrayal will always lead to betrayal of the self by others, right? And I think that's what's happening um, in their connection right now, okay? And it says, like, all, it's all come to a head. And he's there competing with the memory of, of someone who's already passed on, trying to prove his love, trying to prove his love, trying to prove his love. And it's all getting dashed back in, his, in your face because it's, it's not what this person wants. She never wanted to be with him like that okay so i think that's a message about your person as well yeah your person has a lot of fears um about their heart about being alone about um being betrayed being betrayed being betrayed but it's still i think they're still gonna come forward and give you some sort of communication they may even talk about this okay they may even talk about that but i think there's just a lot for them um you know to unpack right now um, let us get um, some advice. Now, if this feels like your person, um, you can join me in the extended. What I'm going to do there, I will get a semi-trans message from your person. 
I will look at their thoughts and feelings regarding you at this time. If there's a third party, I'm going to get the, the thoughts, their thoughts and feelings about the third party. I'm going to look at their actions or potential actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. And then I'll get some advice from a different deck. Underneath the deck, we have the lovers, right? So your person may very well be with somebody else right now. Um, and they have to make a choice. And they're realizing that one of, one of their options... Um, it's not love, it's attachment. You see how dark this heart is? The side of the heart? Right, it's, a, it's attachment. They're realizing that. They're learning the difference between love and attachment. Because love does not contain self-betrayal or self-abandonment. Right? There's no such thing as that. There's compromise, but there's never compromising your core beliefs. Right? Um, we have the shaman. And it's a card number five. This is the hierophant. All right? So, um, your person learning a lot of lessons, but there's also some very deep lessons here, even in this message for you about your core beliefs and being true to yourself and being able to compromise in a relationship without compromising yourself and your core beliefs, um, and your principles, right? There's also messages here about, you know, being clear with your communication, having great boundaries and not allowing fear. Okay. Not a long fear to dictate the trajectory of your life. Because that always will, dis will end in absolute disaster. We saw that disaster like played out before us on a Grammy stage. Or was it the Oscars? The Oscars. <laughs> on an Oscar stage, right? So, all right. So if this is chilling with you, um, please join me in the extended. If not, guys, I'm just grateful for your likes, shares, dislikes, your comments. Um, clicking on the ads, they all help the channel grow. They all help with the algorithm. Um, and please do it for any reader that you enjoy because it's great energy exchange. And it's all about, you know, equal give and take in, in every relationship, even with your, with your reader, right? Um, it does always should be that equal energy exchange. All right, guys. All right, my loves. Take care. Much love. Bye. Hey, pal too. If you chose the modern love tarot, and this beautiful yellow flower this is going to be your reading all right so before we get into what have they realized about this connection let's look at oh good lord your person is in a mess a lot of things falling apart in their life all right what have they realized about you and this connection we're gonna look get a significator for their energy towards you right now and I'm using another Chucks Pisano deck. No, it ain't the love pack today. It is the healing cards, the conspiracy deck. Okay, let's see. Underneath the deck, what do we have here? We have introjection. Jeez, and ages. Okay, guys, I can safely say that I do not know... I wonder if there's um, like delusions of reference where when something happens, you think it has to do with you or if someone is whispering in a corner, um, you think it's you they're whispering about or if someone is mentioning something generally, you think it's all about you. They think that everything is about you. If you um, change your profile pic, maybe they think it's about you. Guys, I have to know what this is. Hmm. Learn something new each day. I know projection, but introjection. Let's see. Card number 28. Um, and 28 reduces to 10. So maybe that's something that they are ending. 28. Let's see. Introjection. Uh, all right. The introjection conspiracy. In psychology, introjection is defined as Taking in viewpoints and values without examination. Oh, they never become ours as they have been taken in whole and never integrated. All right, so this is programming. Okay, this is programming. This is programming. This is coding. Um, this is people who lose themselves and their identities in relationships, right? They just want to be accepted and they will don any mask to be accepted. This is what I'm, I am understanding this to be. Let's see.
I found that people who have the slightest bit of psychic energy, and we all do to different extents, use it to take in or introject the pain of those around them. However, unless we are highly psychic, it does not change the situation and the pain keeps returning. Okay, so this person has also been absorbing all the negative energies and pain um, that surround them and making it their own. So if they have a partner um, that's really unbalanced or is really having a hard time, it no, it's no longer the partner's burden to bear. They've taken it on as they own and they feel like they are the ones they need to solve it. Okay, that's what this card is about. This is actually someone absorbing everybody's negative energy. Okay, I understand it now. I understand it now. So your person, they are very empathic. Okay, they're an empath. And everything around them, they're absorbing. But I also hold on to um, that other one that I thought that it was, where this is someone who has, who doesn't have a very defined sense of identity, who takes on the identity of others. Let me just read this one more time. The, part, the pattern starts when we are children. And as we progress through life, our sympathy or empathy leads us to swallow the pain of friends and lovers. When we get married, we share the pain of our spouse and children. This leads us to take on great amounts of emotional pain. Oh, well, any parent can understand that, right? Okay, I understand that now. Sometimes we take on so much pain that the key personality directing us is overwhelmed and becomes unconscious it can even die leaving another part of the mind in control so this person they're absorbing the pain of others even to the detriment of the death of their own psyche and their own identity so it's a kind of a very tribal way of existing it's not tribal is not the word group like Yeah, it's tribal, but it's, it's group speak. Like, they always take on the emotions of the group. It's like an enmeshment. It's an enmeshment. I think they also feel very enmeshed um, with you. And, and they, they want to solve your own problems. They want to now turn their little savior complex um, onto you. But that's not healthy. All right, let's see. The energy towards you. All right, so we get an insight as to who we're dealing with here. We have someone who has, who has a hero complex going on. Uh, what I want to know if they want to talk. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful. We have accountability. All right. This person is healing. Um, they're healing themselves. There's a lot of green here. They're healing their heart. But they are also healing the way they may have perceived you and healing the way that they are perceiving your connection. Now, let us go back to the, to the bottom of the deck, right? The bottom of the deck was introjection. This person, because they had taken on the identity of their family, the pain of their family, their family trauma um, and dysfunctional patterns, was not able to see you clearly. Uh-uh, they were not. They were not. They weren't able to see you clearly. So even though they were interjecting their own family group or their own tribal group, when it came to you, they were projecting what they had interjected onto you. What? Talk about a mindfuck. They were projecting their introjection <laughs> onto you. But now that this person has been working on that introjection and really working on themselves and really working on their heart, they're now, their mind is now painting a different picture of what happened between you and them. Their mind is now painting a different picture about who you are. And in terms of who you are, you are red, stable, has always been there for them. Blue, the truth. And they are in love with red, stable, and blue is the truth. Okay? 
God, they match, right? <laughs> Same colors. Yeah. They're now seeing you differently. They're painting a different picture in their mind. They're looking back at the road that was traveled between you and them. And they're seeing that you are wifey husband material because look, you are home because there's a home in the background here. And they may have pelted stones at, at your glass house. They were just projecting onto you. And they're taking accountability for how they acted and their role in where this connection is at right now. But one thing is for certain, this person's in love with you. There's just too much green in this card to ignore. They are in love with you. They think you are authentic and they think that you are stable. You have always been there for them. They realize that now. They couldn't see that before. They were, they were too deep in their wounding. They couldn't see that before. It's a four and a six. The emperor four is in love. Six. And it's because they're able now to receive that love because they are healing. They're healing. All right, so let's have a look at... What have they realized about this connection? A lot, a lot. Um, a lot about you, a lot about themselves, right? And how they conducted themselves in this relationship and what you were trying to offer from day one. Seven of Cups. Uh, yeah, I think this, in the past, your person was confused, okay? They had a lot of stuff going on. And it looks like they tried their darnest to fit in to a particular crowd, okay? To a particular crowd. Now, you always stood out from the rest. I see you here. Look at you. Right? You're real. You're real. You're rootsy, right? Yeah. I'm very connected to root chakra, right? They see that you're real. But at the same time, it looks like they were distracted by a lot of different things by money and fame they might have had some kind of work situation going on home they want to party they wanted to live behind the mask they want to be incognito but they couldn't be incognito with you because even though your eyes are closed here you don't need your eyes to see you saw them with your third eye what have they realized about this connection nine of pentacles and you're then ready yet again for some of you maybe you're a bit larger than others but but larger than your size is your heart and they're seeing that look how her heart is ablaze and also her third eye um is ablaze so they're seeing that even though you are very grounded rootsy and something that they can hold on to right there's a lot of you to love right they're seeing that they're also seeing that you're deeply spiritual. You're loving. You're very giving. They see your heart. They see your soul. Because even here where the heart is, it looks like a dove, like the Holy Spirit, right? How the Holy Spirit is depicted. So they're seeing you're independent too. Okay, we have nine of pentacles here. Um, and they want to be like you. They want to start something new with you because they're cherry blossoms there. They want to start something new with you. We have the star. They think you're a star. They think you're a star. And they think that there's something very cosmic um, about your connection. There's something very spiritual that fascinates them, but also scares them with its absolute vastness. Okay? They've never experienced anything like that before. And they feel there's this like anxiety even now that I'm feeling like, that they can get lost in you again. Just like they got lost in their other partners. Because you're so vast. They feel like they can get lost in you. There's, there's so much unknown. So there's so much of you to explore. This person likes certainty. This person likes constancy. This person likes guarantees. That's how they feel safe. But there's nothing safe. Well, you're grounded, yeah. But there's this vastness that they feel. This, no, going to be... Being, having to 
They know if they're with you, they're going to be venturing into paths unknown. <laughs> and they, they in for that life. <laughs> the magician. Beautiful. Yeah. Your master manifester. You don't need them. You don't need them. And that's scary too. They've always felt the need to be needed. Remember, we picked up on somebody who got hero complex, right? That's how they exist in relationships. That is their identity. They rescue, right? But you don't need rescuing. So how do they fit in? How do they keep your attention on them? You know, this is going to be... It's difficult, they like how you're transparent, okay? What you see is what you get, and you're not afraid to put yourself out there. You may not conform to society standards of what beauty is, and yet you're still standing there proudly. It's not stopping you. What have they realized? That they are in love. They're absolutely in love with you, and if they, they, if they don't make their intentions known, they might lose you to somebody else who has more to give. Because they've been basically just keeping their hands in their pockets, not showing their hand. They're not showing their feelings. And they realize if they want a chance with you, um, they have to speak out. They have to put that, they have to take their hands out of the, their pockets and put that off on the table. So coming through very strongly, Pisces with that Knight of Cups. Gemini and Virgo with the Magician there. Aquarius with the Star card. Um, four of Wands in reverse. For some of them, they might be in a committed relationship. For some of them, they might be married. They realize they got to get out of Dodge. They got to make a choice and they got to get out of Dodge. For others, they feel like they have lost you. They feel like they have lost you. Like you've turned your back um, on them and it's going to be a task the sun in reverse it's going to be a task um, for them to make their way back to you they're sad, they're really unhappy we have Leo there with the sun in reverse and they also realize that they weren't the best version of themselves when they were with you um, the sun card in reverse for me is one of my overt narcissist cards right they were all up in their pride um, and ego. And I'm really getting an energy of jealousy. Because this person wanted to be the star. They wanted to be the leader. They wanted to be the hero. And they want to be looked up to. But there's no space for them to do that in your life. You've already saved yourself. You're your own hero. You're your own star. You don't need them for anything. Not finances or anything like that. All you need is some love. But this person has to rescue. It's how they feel safe when somebody is dependent on them and you are not dependent on them. You are nine of pentacles. This person thinks that this connection is destined. Okay, It's something that's been orchestrated by the divine. There's, there's just something very cosmic um, and maybe even galactic about it. If they will allow themselves to let their mind wander so far. They realize that this connection has already expanded their consciousness. And there's still a lot more to go. And, and that also is very scary. They don't know if they can handle going any further down the rabbit hole. Let's pull a card um, on the Four of Wands in reverse. Right. That's one of my world cards. Yeah, they think this, oh, it's over. They think it's over. They think that you have walked away for good because um, Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, in reverse. Yeah. And they think that they, it's, it's best that they walk away because they don't think that they have anything to offer. So 
So for some of them, they think that they have lost you for good. And that's because they weren't taking action. For others of you, there's some other connection in their life um, that is falling apart as we speak. As we speak, it's done. It wasn't stable to begin with. It was a false foundation and now it's done. So your person going through a rough time, but they needed to go through that to see your value. To see your value and to see themselves um, appropriately and correctly. To grow, to accept accountability for the part that they play. They, 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 need, they need to see that perspective. Let's get um, some messages from their 3D self. What do they want you to know? I'm going into the reconciliation deck. What do they want you to know here? Underneath the deck, discovery period. Yeah, it is indeed a, a period of, this, of discovery and expansion for a person. They're accustomed to seeing life in a particular, through a particular kind of lens, a very limited lens, quite frankly. But now they're really examining things up close and they're examining you up close. And there's a lot they're discovering about you. And you know what else they're discovering about you? They're discovering that they are in love. They're in love. They're in love. Now that they're looking at you closely, they're in love. We have within a year, and then there are fireworks here. So it looks like some sort of celebration. Um, you can even be spending New Year's with this person. We got daddy issues. Interesting. Some of you can watch part one. We've got healing and process, but we saw that picked up on that, picked up on that. And we have giving and receiving. So um, this is what your person is hoping for. <clears throat> you can definitely watch part one because this came out in the same position. No, was it? Or was the energy underneath this deck in part one? So definitely watch part one. Right. So what they want is, is balance in this relationship. They want to be able to give back to you as you have been giving to them. Um, this person wants that equity. But they're not going to be able to give the kind of love that you've been giving until they heal their heart. And it looks here that there is some sort of daddy issue here. Now, when we have daddy issues and we have issues with masculinity, um, sometimes it can go towards toxic masculinity. And that really doesn't allow us to process our pro our emotions appropriately um, and also makes us have issues um, with authority and um, with standing in our own power and with trusting our intuition okay because um, toxic masculinity is all about the brain okay it's all about thought and thinking where the when the true knowledge comes from intuition and wisdom right which is a very heart-based process in fact scientists are now <laughs> discovering um, that the heart is one of the most powerful, intuitive, um, and most powerful in terms of energetic organs um, in the body, right? So your person is trying to heal this daddy issue so that they can really drop into their heart space and really be able to reciprocate the love that they have been receiving from you. So they're doing a lot of heart healing and they're also healing their shadow side. You see the moon here? Okay. So maybe even with this new moon's energy that I'm read, I'm currently reading in the new moon. This new moon's energy um, that is coming up um, is going to trigger, bring up and trigger a lot of release things to be released, especially as it pertains to their father. Now I see the shirt and tie here. So maybe their father was very traditional. Um, maybe he's one of the, maybe their father might might have been one of those baby boomers, where you know. You find a job, you work at that job for the rest of your life, you have the picket fence, um, the wife, the children, and even though you guys may not gel, um, you hold together, 
and paint that perfect picture of, of those like you know stand for wives kind of thing going on right so this is where your person gets all that traditional programming from um and tr pro traditional programming is not going to gel with the kind of person that you are because we saw you're, you're quite you're quite quirky right you're quirky you're connected to spirit right so that kind of straight lace white color blue color whatever programming they have going on there um is not going to gel with the kind of expansive um worldview that this person needs to adopt in order to even be with you so to go from this narrow perspective to this total expansion here that that's a that's a big ask <laughs> that's a big ask for a person but they're willing to do it though and within our year's time it looks like you guys are going to be celebrating something but they're taking on this healing they're they're surrendering to this healing process um Let's get some advice. So if this feels like a person, join me next time. And what we're going to look at there, um, we're going to get a semi-trans message from your person. We're going to look at their thoughts and feelings for you. If there's a third party connected to your connection, we're going to look at your person's thoughts and feelings for them. And then we're going to look at your person's actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. And we'll get more advice. All right, we have the craft. All right, so that's all about you. It's about your spiritual gifts. It may, maybe you are a kind of crafty kind of person. And not in crafty in terms of cunning, right? In terms of, you know, that kind of arts and craft kind of thing. So somebody creative, right? So spirit saying, this is something that you need um, to focus on right now because it's going to bring you um, a lot of abundance and a lot of luck, okay? So your spiritual gifts um, and your creative projects. What's the advice here? We have narrow. What is this? Maybe you two have has had um, some very limiting ideas about yourself, your spiritual gifts, um, and what you wish to accomplish um, in your life. But Spurs reminding you here that you are infinite see with that star card you are infinite you are limitless especially if you decide to tap into your heart space you are infinite there's nothing that you cannot accomplish let me read narrow from the book though narrow It's one of those bonus cards in this book. Narrow. Narrow. It says, oh, focus. So many things to do and only one you. Try writing a list and focus solely on one task from that list at a time. Alternatively, you may be too narrow-minded regarding how you execute the task at hand. Listen to the ideas of others, compromise, and share the glory. So you might have been searching for a solution um, from some particular problem, whether it's related to work or money or even this relationship, but spiritually you're taking a too narrow of a worldview. Um, you, see, you have to see it in a more expansive kind of manner. And know that there are others out there who are poised to help you, including your guides, right? Um, your guardian angels, right? So all you need to do is call upon um, that sort of help. You don't have to go it alone. All right? I'm Alam, so that was a reading. Grateful for your likes, shares, subscribes, your comments, clicking on the ads. Um, they help the channel grow and the message um, to spread. Okay, and please do that for any reader that you enjoy. It really helps us stay independent on YouTube. All right, my loves. Take care. Bye. Hey, pal three, if you chose the bone stone and earth flesh tarot and this uh, purple flower, this is going to be your reading. So before I begin, let's get a significator from your person. And their energy towards you right now. <clears throat> their energy towards you. All 
and okay we have centering and it says grace okay so this person might be practicing a lot of self-care a lot of mindfulness techniques because they're just trying to get themselves really grounded right now uh, and it's in preparation for making a big decision okay they really want spirit's guidance right now you see they're dressed in all pink that's about the crown chakra right so they're making themselves more receptive in order to get that guidance i also get that they want to make themselves more receptive to you this is them standing in their spiritual power we have card number eight number num sorry we have number eight here it's a card number 81 number eight the strength card okay and that's about physical strength spiritual strength sacral chakra energy and that power there and then we have one which is the magician and he's also very spiritually powerful right so your person <clears throat> stepping into their spiritual power they want they want spirit's guidance they want spirit's guidance there's a, there's i get a, a decision that they want to make here angelic intervention so we had 81 before and now we have card number 82 so there's definitely some kind of progression that your person is making towards ending some sort of cycle because eight and two equals ten okay so there's a progression here to end some sort of cycle all right let's have a look at this okay we see someone walking away from a, a wheelchair so a wheelchair is okay something that they, they thought they might have needed but if they're walking they didn't need it anyway so this person was basically um, handicapping themselves in another situation or they were handicapping themselves through some sort of limiting beliefs or, or thoughts okay like they were using something as a, a crutch to get by um in life maybe it's a relationship maybe it was an addiction but whatever it was it was limiting your person rather than helping them they thought that it was helping them and it could be anything uh, maybe even their family support they thought that you know this family structure was helping them but maybe they're now realizing they are bloody narcissistic family members who don't want to see them progress so your person is discarding all the fetters that may have kept them bound and they are walking towards their purpose and you see they're getting spirit's guidance in doing this so this is what they wanted and this is what they're getting right now this person has come a long way imagine trying to push that wheelchair well yeah push that wheelchair on your own volition look at that walk, watch the road watch the road and it's been a long road eh? a long road rocky road wheelchair your own volition yeah they're getting off of that they've they've come a long way and now spirit is asking them to leave all their fetters behind where they're going they won't need it and, and they're walking into the light um they may have had some sort of self-confidence issue okay and they're now walking into a new concept of themselves um self-esteem a brighter future a brighter future and it's all guided um by spirit here so i see them walking towards uh, towards you and they're getting some sort of intervention from spirit um to do that okay um let's pull a couple cards on this guys <clears throat> let's pull a couple cards three of swords in reverse yeah they're leaving behind some sort of third party situation some sort of heartbreak and pain that kept them bound let's walk i told you they're walking towards the sun stepping into their power <clears throat> and they, they've been doing a lot of heart healing right so <clears throat> maybe you've not been speaking with this person because my throat is closing up but it looks like they've been doing a lot of heart healing three of swords in reverse is about heart healing five of cups in reverse is about heart healing and getting over some sort of grief and pain so they they're moving out of that something that kept them stuck okay something that made them manifest a lot of difficult relationships and a lot of hardship because it was warping their sense of perception and how they were perceiving their life this person thought that they were bound to this wheelchair for life but it was just a story they were telling themselves it wasn't real 
wasn't real. Like at some point somebody told them, hey, you need a wheelchair. And like they never questioned it. Um, it's like, do you remember that story about the lady who convinced her daughter that she was ill, that she needed to be in a wheelchair, that she needed to be fed baby food, that kind of thing. And she was basically um, exploiting the daughter um, for um, charitable donations. I wish I could remember the intricacies of the story. And then one day, like, the daughter just realized, wait a minute, I can actually walk, right? I can actually walk. Um, I can actually eat real food. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. And that's what your person's realizing, that there's nothing wrong with me. Somebody told them that something is wrong with them. Something is wrong with them. And they've been using something as a crutch to escape what they thought was wrong with them, but nothing was ever wrong with them. And that's the shit about programming. And the false narratives that people try to make us believe. They just start their false narratives, but at some point in our childhood, we take them on as truth. But your person's realizing that this, this image they have of themselves, this self-concept, Nothing more than coding, really. Programming. Projections of other people onto them that they accepted um, as truth. Underneath the deck, we have seven of wands. They're standing up for themselves. Yeah, they're going to battle. You know what? I'm not accepting... People swinging all their daggers at me and not defending myself, talking shit about me. And then I just accepting everything people say. Hell to the no. I'm standing up for myself now. All right. So let's see how uh, they, what have they realized about this connection. What has your person realized about this connection? We have the Six of Cups. gorgeous we have the six of wands in reverse the hierophant taurus um the seven of pentacles in reverse one second guys yeah, sorry about that I want to take the six cards. Um, the Ace of Wands in reverse. What have they realized? And the Queen of Swords in reverse. Okay. What have they realized um, about the you um, and this connection? Well, the first message that's coming through is that they realize that you are their soul spouse, their soul mate, the one. We have it here as six of, uh, as six of cups. Um, and this person realizes that they want you in their life. I feel this person was telling a lot of lies to themselves. Just as how they were believing the lies of other persons, they were telling a lot of lies to themselves. Like before they were telling themselves like they didn't want you because we have the seven of pentacles in reverse here um but this queen of swords in reverse lets me know that it was all a lie so they didn't take action on this connection we have the ace of wands in reverse they didn't take action on, con on this connection until it was too late and it looks like them realizing that it's too late because they think it's too late them realizing that it's too late triggered some sort of ego death here we'll, we have the six of wands in reverse you're, you taught your person a big lesson about what happens when you're not your authentic self. About what happens when you invest in the wrong connections and the wrong people. About what happens when your sacral chakra energy is misused. 
So I am picking up some sort of addiction here. Definitely a sex addiction um, coming through or just an abuse of power coming through. Okay. That is something a person's healing, right? Um, their relationship with power. Okay. It looks like they were trying to control you, trying to control the situation and trying to, and try to force you into a situation that did not align with your core beliefs. And it's like they pushed you and pushed you until you said no more. For some of you, they may have chosen someone else over you. Look, I see this Queen of Swords in reverse. And this Queen of Swords in reverse is very verbally abusive, very harsh, very cold. They don't know um, how to love. And your person might have been very harsh and very cold with you because they didn't know how to love because they didn't love themselves, right? But it looks like they got someone to mirror back themselves to them. And it's taught them a lot about love um, and this false persona um, that they had taken on. This facade that they had taken on since possibly childhood. So even though they may not be speaking to you. Um, at this point in time, know that this you are heavy on your person's mind. They want to come forward, perhaps with some flowers. And these are what? Is it bluebells? So you can look up um, the spiritual meaning of bluebells. Um, and that will be a message for you. In fact, let me find out so I can tell you right now. Because that might add something to what I need to say. In this reading. Just give me a moment guys. Alright let's see. Spiritual. Meaning. Of bluebells. I think it's bluebells anyway. That's the name that came to mind. <laughs> Symbolizes constancy. Humility. And gratitude. And I definitely get that's what happened. I think spirit humbled their ass. Yeah, six of wands in reverse is about being humbled by spirit. Spirit humbled their ass. And they have learned a lesson now about being constant. So I think this person, they want to come forward. Um, they want to be dependable. Um, they want to invest where they did not invest before. And they want to give you some kind of gesture that's going to let you know that they are in it for the long haul and that they have indeed changed. That's what they want you to know. They want you to know that they have indeed changed. They're no longer this cold-hearted person. You know, you've cracked open their heart and you've opened them up um, to the spirit realm. They realize they were, they were misusing their power. And maybe they had a lot of sexual power over you. Like they were sort of maybe, you know, using sex as control. Trying to manipulate you with sex. But spirit humbled their ass. They learned a very powerful lesson. I'm also getting that that humbling may have included some sort of financial loss with the seven of pentacles in reverse here. I feel like you were dealing with someone you know, they were all about the show. I, I'm really getting like a showboat personality. All about the show. All about how things look rather than how they really are. Okay, so they had all this um, thing going on from the public eye. They projected a particular image um, out there. Okay. But that image has prevented them from really getting in touch with who they really were inside. So big, big lessons for your person, big lessons. For some of you, your person might have even been married with this Hierophant here. They might have been married. And whoever they got married to, not nice. Not nice, does not know how to love, just harsh. Harsh and defensive. Just like how your person was. So, 
They're, they have been humbled by spirit. Um, and they want to come forward. Okay? With some sort of gesture that's going to let you know. They have changed and they, they want to be there for you. Let's get some messages from their 3D self. This is the reconciliation deck. <clears throat> Underneath the deck, we have temporary. If you guys are in separation, this is just temporary. <clears throat> Everything is going to happen at the appointed hour, okay? At the strike of midnight. <laughs> Everything is going to happen. Everything is going to happen um, in a very beautiful, magical way, right? But right now, your person needs this time to heal. You see all the pink in this card? Um, they need that time to heal. All right, let's see. What's the messages from their 3D self? And we have unable to give. Yeah, they are unable to give right now. I do think that this person is spending a lot of time alone. I really get hermit vibes. Remember that first card underneath the deck um, was 81, which reduced to 9, right? And it was um, centered, right? Centered. I think they're getting themselves centered, okay? And right now, they need to give to themselves rather than give to other people. But I think they were really closed off. Just like this person that they may have hooked up with. They were really close off, hyper defensive. Okay. And I think they're seeing the truth of that. This card is blue. They're seeing that they were really closed off and they never gave to this connection. Yeah. And it, it, it comes from daddy issues. Um, you guys can watch Pound 2. I think Pound 2 had daddy issues, right? I think everything that they did was try was their attempt to please their father or model their life after their father. I think their father, whether by their presence or absence, um, had a great impact on your person's, I'm hearing, self-esteem and their self and their worldview. Their worldview. Your person felt that they had to be perfect. So what they got from their father or the message that they got from their father from whatever happened is that they needed to be perfect in order to be liked, admired, and loved. And if perfect being perfect meant betraying your heart, then they would have done that because it was all about the image, right? And you know what, especially when people have a low self-concept, um, they like to project the perfect life out there, okay? Because they don't want people to see how they really are inside, okay? We have spontaneous. So let's expect this person to pop up like Jack in the Box, right? Um, it's going to be some kind of very spontaneous gesture. Um, <laughs> maybe they want to come and make you laugh, but know that inside this person is deeply insecure um, about coming forward and approaching you. Spirit saying that within, within one month, and the 30th is circled here. So if there's a 30th that's coming up very close to when you watch this reading, it's probably going to be them. But Spirit saying within a month, this person's going to pop up like Jack in the Box. Um, and perhaps they might pretend <laughs> that nothing happened and try to fall back in. But, you know, Spirit saying just be receptive um, and see where it goes. Of course, you're not going to let this person treat you badly. You're not going to let this person take you for granted like the last time. You're going to have your healthy boundaries, but, you know, just be receptive. See what they say. And then Spirit's also asking you um, to look within and take accountability for the path. The part that you played um, in everything that unfolded. Spirit is also reminding you as well that if you've attracted this person into your life, that this person is also mirroring aspects of you. So do you have daddy issues? Okay. Were you hyper vigilant and a bit, uh, a bit closed off? Okay. Hyper independent. 
Were you unable to truly give yourself and trust this person in this connection? Were you also hiding behind a mask and not allowing this person to see who you really were inside? Were you trying to hide your imperfections from this person? Were you also living a life of ego, posting pics on Instagram and pretending that everything was perfect? So spirits are also saying that this person, they're learning to be authentic. They're dealing with their issues. But make sure that you are also doing the same. It takes two. It always does. It always does. That's why I don't believe in, you know, that whole narcissist empath paradigm. I, I don't believe in it because it limits each person's ability to take upon accountability for their actions um, and to heal. And I believe all humans through awareness can heal. Because narcissists and empaths, or people we identify as narcissists and empaths, they have two, they have they have one major thing in common. They both don't have healthy boundaries. Both of them. They both don't have healthy boundaries. So whilst someone may have transgressed yours, you might not have had healthy boundaries in the first place. It always takes two. It's convenient for us to blame what happened or to make, to make someone the villain in our story. But there's always a part that we played in whatever happened to us. Now, I'm not talking about you being a victim of crime. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what happens um, in your interpersonal relationships. That simple act of relating to one another. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about physical abuse. I'm not talking about crime. Everything else is within our circle um, of control. And even with physical abuse, you know, there's always, you know, those warning signs. So, you know, sometimes we just ignore our intuition and maybe that's the part we played. We ignored our intuition. We saw the red flags and we, and we ignored it because we wanted to be loved and there's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved. But if it is at the expense of loving ourselves and honoring our core values and our boundaries, then that's not love at all, is it? Okay. All right, let's get some advice. Now, in the extended, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a semi-trans message from your person. I'm going to look at their thoughts, their feelings regarding you. If there is a third party connected to your situation, I'm going to look at your person's thoughts and feelings for them. I'm going to get um, your person's actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. And then I'll get further advice from Spirit. But in the meantime, um, if you can't join me in the extended, this advice is for you. Now Spirit let you know that you're going to be triumphant. You're going to win, sis. <laughs> right? Or they, however you identify yourself. You're going to win. You're going to be triumphant because Spirit is on your side. The scales of karma are on your side, right? You're going to be triumphant. Right, this wheel is going to turn, but you also have your inner work um, to do. It's not just about this person. We have Ye Ye, and this is the Empress. Um, and the Empress, one of her major qualities is that she represents Yin energy, and Yin is all about receiving. Yin is all about receiving. We, we got that message about being receptive, right? Yin is all about receiving and making yourself receptive. Yin is all about grounding. So just as your person's getting centered, spirit is also asking you to get centered. And spirit is reminding you of who you are. So whatever this person wants to do, want to say when they come back, spirit wants to remind you of who you are. And you have to keep that at the forefront of your mind. Remember your self-worth. Remember you are a goddess, a god. And you should be treated as such. A divine being. And you should be treated as such. 
But first, you need to recognize that within yourself and hold and embody that energy. And the energy of alone will prevent people from trying to come around and mess around with your head and that kind of stuff. The energy alone will not attract that kind of partner. Okay? Now, the, answer, the Empress is also very creative, right? She takes things from the 5D and she grounds it into the 3D. So maybe there's some kind of project that you're meant to give birth to. For some of them, for some of you, you may find yourself um, pregnant, actually pregnant with a child. There is that. Maybe that is part of your calling within this relationship. But Spirit's just reminding you, this is who you are. You are a creator. Okay? Um, so that was your reading. If you can join me and extend it, please do. If not, I'm just grateful for everything that you do for this channel. Your cups of coffee, your likes, your shares, your subscribes, your subscribes. <laughs> um, your comments down below. They all help with the algorithm and making sure that this community grows and expands. And I appreciate you guys for it. Take care. Bye. Hey, part four, if you chose um, the journey of the sacred bee, and this flower, this is going to be your reading. So before we get into this, let's have a look at what's your person's current um, energy towards you. Let's get a significator for that. We have relationship, but it's a conspiracy. Um, and look at how this person's kind of, the masculine energy is kind of tangled up um, in the brushes here. This person, the underlying energy is a fear of commitment. This person thinks that relationships are a trap. Now, I do get that this is an ideology that is shifting because it's a card number 37 and 37 reduces to 10. So I feel it's an ideology that is shifting, but this I think is the thought process when they met you. Relationships are a trap, especially to masculine energies, right? Everybody's gonna be happy except whoever's a masculine energy in the relationship. Um, you get all tangled up and you get stuck there and who wants to be stuck but i feel like this is changing and your person is seeing that relationships family can be a very joyful um experience i do get this person has a kind of fractured relationship um with their own parents with their own family even though they may present a pretty picture to the world there's a lot of underlying resentments and unspoken feelings. It's like, it's like this. A lot of tension. Yeah. Yeah, your person's afraid of commitment. And they're afraid of commitment because they want to be perfect in everyone's eyes. And they don't want anyone to see their shadow. They don't want anyone to see their wounded inner child. They don't want anyone to find out about what they went through. Um, as a child, okay, and it looks like there was a very traumatic experience that happened here. I see this person in almost like a fetal position, and their back turned to the world. So your person turned their back on the world a long time ago, and they turned their back on love a long time ago, okay? They have been seriously, seriously hurt, but now they are afraid of you walking away. I feel like you stood in your power somehow, okay? And you kind of pulled back your energy from this person. And now they are facing some abandonment wounds and some trauma that they refused to face before. This person is just basically trapped in fear. I think it's one of those persons they always expect the worst. And of course, whatever you think of, whatever you think about, whatever you feel is what you manifest, right? So they're absolutely terrified 
of commitment and family. And if they have a, their own family right now, they're feeling very trapped in that circumstance. Because they show me a picture of someone. They show me somebody banging on a glass. Ponging in a glass door. Get me out. Let me out. Let me out. They are afraid. Of the unknown. The moon is all about the unknown. It's a card number 18. The unknown. They are afraid of the unknown. There's someone who likes things predictable. That's what makes them feel secure. When they can predict what's going to happen. But now you're asking them to take steps in the dark. Take a chance on you. Um. And they're wounded and a child ain't having that. <laughs> ain't having it. Let's put some cards in there. Ain't having it. Yeah, there's, there's, there's resistance here. Nine of Pentacles reverse, they don't love themselves and they don't want people to find out the real them. They just want people to just be contented with the image. We have four of swords. We have seven of swords and we have the world in reverse. Now, um, this is something that is still battling with, you know, and it is changing because we have the four of swords here. We know that this mask facade, this idea that they need this mask and facade, we know that it is changing, but they're still a work in progress. You know, we all are, we all are, but this person is coming to the realization that they do love you. There is love here. It's just that um, they got some very toxic family members um, and that hurt and pain from the past is, is keeping them stuck. Okay. As much as they recognize now it's a false, you know, narrative that they've told themselves and it's just pain. It's just wounding. It's toxic family patterns. They know this on a very conscious level, but subconscious that wounded inner child um, is afraid. Afraid. Okay. So fear is a key word. Um, in this reading. All right, let's look at how. Um, let's see what they have realized uh, about you and this connection. I have my little guide here because sometimes I go off on a tangent. <laughs> Gotta keep myself on track. Where is it? Guys, one second. Oh, good Lord. Got it. Got it. Look at my little guide right there. And maybe they are trying to connect to their guides right now because maybe they did get off track. All right, we have the Hierophant in reverse. I feel like they're trying to break out of programming. They're trying to break out of those false narratives they've been telling themselves, all the limited beliefs that they've been telling themselves that's been keeping them very limited um, and very, very stuck, okay? Um, I think they've been putting up this image and they're just, you know, very traditional, um, straight-laced kind, of kind of person. But now that they're finding their purpose, then there's a wild side that's, that wants to break out. It wants to break out. All right, so let's see what have they realized about you and this connection. We got the Eight of Swords in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> sure, right. We have the Tower in reverse. Um, we have the Star card in reverse. Wow. The Queen of Swords. Uh, yep, I really was getting that. So showing up big, we have Aries and Scorpio energy. We have Aquarius energy. We have Queen of Swords energy. We got the Hermit with 
We got the Hermit Virgo energy. Lots of major arcana out here. And blocked energies as well. And then we have the Page of Cups. What are they realizing? Or what have they realized about this connection? They got to save themselves. They realize they have to save themselves. They have to free themselves from wherever they are. I think this person, um, they were just holding on to a comfort zone. And they wanted you to conform to their way of being instead of them coming out of their own shell, being their authentic self, and then you guys having that equal, authentic exchange. They want to rope you into their 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 ideologies, their lifestyle, um, their warped sense of thinking, their perspective. But now they realize if they want to be with you, they have to free themselves from wherever they are. Whatever comfort zone they were holding on to, they have to free themselves. And they, they realize as well, may may not know the word karmic, that this connection, or rather, um, whatever connection they're in right now, or whatever they are holding on to, whether it is some sort of addiction or all toxic family patterns, they realize it's not serving them. They, they keep being hurt by it over and over again. Uh, it's no longer resonating with where they're going. So they know that they have to allow it to fall away. And all this is happening because it looks like you spoke some sort of truth. You drew some sort of boundary here. Look at you. Big ass sword in the bee. You drew some sort of boundary here and you let them know what's what. You let them know what you were looking for, what you wanted. So your wants and your needs, you articulated it. There was no more ambiguity. You took that sort of truth and you sliced through all the illusions and you let this person know what you wanted. And it looks like they were shooketh. They were shooketh. They were shooketh. Um, and in fact, <laughs> Spirit is showing me, you know, you know, a dog with a tail between their legs and they kind of and they go in the corner. Whatever you said to them really you, you hit them in their trigger center. It was a big trigger for them. You hit them in their trigger center. Um, they feel abandoned by you, but they also feel like that child that was denied something that they wanted. Okay? So they're thinking about things because even this person here that's in fear, they are in hermit mode. Um, they got to reflect on what's going on here. They have to figure out, you know, where do they want to go? Where do they want to take this with you? Where, who, who, are, who am I? Who am I? It's that age-old existential question. Who am I? Okay? Am I these thoughts and beliefs that were handed down to me from my ancestry and my lineage? Or am I something else? Am I meant for something else? This is what it's trying to figure out. And they're also realizing that all this time, you were trying to offer them love. You kept holding out a cup, giving a cup over and over again. You were trying to offer them love. Now they want to have this authentic experience with you. They are seeing the value of this connection, this experience. They really are. Because they've been doing a lot of inner reflection. Okay? And they're seeing the truth of who you are. And it looks like you're very special to them, right? Um... They feel a kind of innocent kind of love. Um, the kind of love that they had in their heart before their trauma, before their pain, before, you know, they were they were before they integrated all those projections um from others. That's what they feel, it's like their heart is being renewed um by this experience, by by this reflection. So you've made, that, you've made them contemplate life and their, their whole existence. This has been such a pivotal relationship um, for them. And they know that they have a lot of healing to do. And they have a lot of work to do before they're able to completely reciprocate in this relationship. This connection. They're seeing you as ha you haven't freed yourself from this. You are no longer participating in any kind of fear-based relationship, okay? Any kind of relationship where you have to hide and you can't be seen and you're afraid to show your authentic self um, and, you know, it's a kind of cloak and dagger thing. You know, you're not in that. 
just as you are authentic to the world, you want to be authentic in your relationships and you want people to, you want to be seen. You want to be seen. Feel like a lot of cloak and dagger, kind of clandestine kind of thing going on here. Um, and you're not having it anymore. You want the light to be shone upon this connection because it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a, it's a beautiful connection. And you no longer want to be hidden in the shadows. And they, don't, they no longer want to hide themselves either, to be honest. They want to be like you, Queen of Swords. This is who I am. If you can't deal with it, you know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. That's who they want to be like. They want to be like you. You have um, absolutely inspired this person. Um, and you've made them return to their core self. You know, that's some by enigma return to innocence. Right, you've made them return to innocence. That's the energy I'm feeling there. It's, 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 this, this last card is just really striking me. It's just beautiful and, and innocent. You know? Let's get some messages from your person's 3D self. What do they want you to know right now? And I'm using the reconciliation deck. We have just for you. Yeah, there's a message of truth um, that they want to give you. Now, for some of you, you might be receiving this um, intuitively because it's a purple letter, right? Um, but they want to talk to you, okay? Um, they want to share with you the things that they have learned, okay? Their insights, their downloads. It's pink in this card, their downloads. They feel like you're going to understand. You feel like They feel like you are the only person that understands them. We have karmic lessons. Yeah, they're learning a lot about themselves through this whole experience, okay? So this being trapped in fear and these ideologies, they're not just from this lifetime. There's numerous lifetimes a person doing the same thing, being afraid of putting themselves out there, being afraid of being with you in public. It, it's, it's lifetimes of this, okay? Um, they're also recognizing that you and them sh share um, an infinite bond, and you have been one of their greatest teachers. Um, this person might be still in another connection, wrapping up some sort of karmic lesson. I think I'll pull some cards on that. But Spirit says within one month, um, you can expect some sort of shift um, in this connection. Okay? Um, I feel like you guys can watch part three. Let me write that down. Power three, which power four, vice versa, I think. Power three, power two. Okay. Yeah. Within one month, something's going to happen. For some of you, um, there's a pregnancy on the horizon. Whoever that resonates for. Um, we have a minor setback. Okay, and I still see like this person still feeling kind of trapped um, here. So we're going to find out what that minor setback is all about. So there's some sort of delay here. Okay, and we have childhood memories. Exactly what I was picking up on. All right, I think your person would have come forward already, but they're realizing they need this time alone. I think now that they're truly introspecting, a lot of things that they didn't deal with from the past are resurfacing to be dealt with once and for all okay we picked up on the childhood trauma this childhood trauma is coming right back at them um, and again this card is pink so there's a lot of healing that needs to be done here so i think this is what's causing the delay right um they're doing some deep diving 
um, and they're linking their traumatic childhood um, to a possible karmic relationship that they are in right now. They're seeing that they created a lot of, they recreated a lot of their childhood wounding in the partners that they subsequently chose, right? So they just kept re-victimizing themselves over and over again, and it's because they never healed. I remember that first card that we got with the family um, and the trap. Remember that first card? So whatever impressions that they got in their foundation from their family really colored how they looked at love, relationships, and family, and they just kind of manifested um, dysfunction. Let's pull some cards on karmic lessons. We have Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Now, the Queen of Pentacles is the Golden Karmic. So I do think for your, for this pile, your person definitely has someone else. And it's someone who is not in love with them. They're just there for the money, the status. But they're moving on from that person. As they heal, they're no longer in resonance with this person. Um, and it looks like they're moving on. It's, an, it's definitely a karmic soulmate um, for them. And Spirit in one in one month's time, um, you're going to see some kind of movement here. Yeah, it's going to become too much um, for your person and they're going to be manifesting a new beginning. You know, really doing, stepping into their healing and stepping into their purpose, following their intuition. What's this minor setback, Spirit? What's this minor setback? We have five of ones in reverse. Yeah, um, they have a lot to deal with. I think that there's a lot of drama that's happening in their life right now and they have to sort that out um, before they get out of Dodge. That's what I'm feeling with that. Yeah. And they're also grieving. They're going through an ego death here. And that's why all these childhood memories are coming right up. They're going through an ego death. And they're realizing that who they thought they were, they're not. Who they thought they were is a facade. An, uh, an identity created out of wounding and creating out of the need to protect oneself. So this minor setback is to allow for them um, to really heal uh, and to really erase and eradicate the false identities that they made up from their childhood wounding. Okay. So I'm going to take this to the extended, but I'm going to give you some advice. In the extended, I'm going to get a semi-trans message from your person. I'm going to look at their thoughts and their feelings, their headspace and their heart space for you. If your person's in a third party, with a third party, I'm going to look at their thoughts and feelings with regard to that third party. And then I'm going to look at what's going to be their possible actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. And then I'll get some last bit of advice from the spirit. Um, but if you can't join me in the extended, this is your advice, your advice here. Underneath the deck, we have the battle. Okay? So spirit saying right now, there's a battle that's being waged between the light and the dark, masculine and feminine. Okay? Um, and you have a pivotal role in which side wins out. So spirit is asking you to align to your God truth, your universal truth, okay? Align to your highest self um, at this time. Let's have a look. You have a role in how things turn out. Your energy um, is going to anchor healing for your person. We have Baba Water, and this is the Father of Water, or the King of Cups. Spirit is saying, Open your heart, right? And see if you can find within your heart to have love and compassion for this person because you're going to need it. And you're going to need it in order to forgive them. I do think that this person was not their best self when you guys were interacting. 
and I do think that they're you're going to find out things about your person that they may have hid from you, um, things that they may have done to you, things that they may have done to themselves, things that happened to them in their childhood, and you're going to need that big heart of love and compassion in order to accept them in their totality. Okay? That's what I'm getting with that. This is a time for true, um, unconditional love. All right? All right, my love. So if you're able, join me next time. If not, guys, thank you so much for everything that you do for the, your ch for the, It's your channel too, yeah? <laughs> for this channel, your likes, shares, subscribes, your comments, cups of coffee, dislikes, they all help this channel grow and our community grow. And I'm very grateful. For those of you that click on the ads, thank you so much for that. Um, it really helps me stay independent on YouTube, which I absolutely love. Okay? I'm in love. Take care.